countdown. Congratulations! This live broadcast is specially brought to you by Academy YouTuber Malaysia, an initiative by EDD Malaysia and Kelab Guru Malaysia. Please pay attention. The live broadcast will begin shortly. The link to the certificate of attendance will be provided at the end of the session. Please make sure it is filled within the stipulated time. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, good evening and hi uh, to all teachers, uh, parents and the wonderful students. So welcome to Pusat Tuition Academy YouTuber, a joint venture with EDB Malaysia and Club Guru Malaysia uh, with the hashtag uh, Bermula Percuma Selamanya Percuma. So before we proceed, uh, let's begin our session with the recitation of Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah and for the non-Muslim, please take a moment of silence. Okay, so how is everyone doing today? My prayer is that everyone is in the best of health and ready to proceed uh, with today's class. Uh, I also would like to wish uh, you all, uh, the Muslim, eh, for uh, selamat uh, berpuasa eh, for in bulan Ramadan. Now we are in uh, bulan Ramadan, fasting month. So uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, I am Madam Rosmaya. Uh, as your moderator and uh, also a control host for today. So I am a Form 6 Physics teacher uh, at SMJK Yuhua Kajang Selangor. And the most uh, important person today is our presenter, okay? Uh, teacher Nun. So she is from College Matriclasi Negeri Sembilan. So let us give a warm welcome to our presenter. Uh, even though there are only two of us here, but we, we will make sure that today's session runs smoothly. So for the record, uh, we are now live on Teachers Known's uh, channel. So as a sign for, uh, of support to Teacher Known for the hard work in preparing today's session, so please subscribe the channel and not forgetting my channel too. Uh, as usual, the lesson will, will last approximately one hour. The certificate link and the credit li uh, claim link will be given at the end of this session. And remember that uh, you can only use EDD email and MOE email to claim the certificate. So for the credit claim, uh, you need to collect one letter and five digit codes. Eh? One letter and five digit codes. So which uh, will be announced uh, separately three times during our class today. So be sure to follow the class up until the end to get the complete code uh, for the credit claim. Uh, I would also like to remind students uh, to use appropriate language and also use appropriate profile picture if you wish to post comments in the chat box. And I'm pretty sure all of the students here are excellent students who will uphold a positive classroom environment. So please give your full cooperation in making this class a lively one. Stay focused and if you have any questions, please write on the chat box eh? and teacher Nun will try to provide you with the answers. So before I pass this session to Teacher Noon, okay, I will announce the letter and the first two digit codes for credit claim. So listen carefully, the codes are A, number two, number three. I repeat, the codes are A, number two, number three. So without further ado, please welcome Teacher Noon, you can start your presentation. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Rosmaya. Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh, and good afternoon. So I hope that everybody in a good health. Okay, so for today's class, uh, we will do the revision on the topic uh, electromagnetic induction. But before that, I want to introduce you the academy YouTuber team for the Prayu. So here we have the physics teams, which is led by Madam Rosmaya. Okay, our moderator today, and then our mathematic. Uh, Pray you lead by teacher Im, okay, and then we also have the biology team which is led by uh, Cikgu Faiza, and the chemistry team led by Cikgu Shahnun. Instead of that, we have the Perakaunan and Economy Prayu team, okay, led by Madam Fizi, 
Okay, so you 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 will get a lot of video in our Academy YouTuber apps. Okay, you can download this app uh, this apps from the Google Play, and you will you will you can find a lot of educational video inside the uh, apps. Okay. And then for, as I said, for today's class, we will do the revision for the topic five, which is the title is electromagnetic induction. So as usual, uh, I will brief the, I will do the summary or briefing about this topic. And after that, we will discuss the, the related question, okay, for the revision and for the exercise. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so... Uh, for the concept discussion, the first part that you're supposed to know in this topic is about the magnetic flux. So the definition of magnetic flux is the scalar product between the magnetic flux density B with the vector of the area A. Okay, do focus on the magnetic flux symbol is phi, small letter of phi. Okay, and then in this case, magnetic flux density is also referred to the magnetic uh, field strength. Okay, another name for the magnetic flux density is magnetic field strength. So we use the we also use these terms to explain about the magnetic uh, field strength. Eh? And for the equation, it is given by V is equal to B the magnetic flux density dot A. So it is a because it is a dot product, it is a scalar quantity, which is it is equal to to calculate the magnetic of magnetic flux. Uh, we the equation is B A cos theta. So it is very important for you to identify the A, which is the area of the coil, because of this is scalar quantity, and then uh, the theta supposed to be the angle between the uh, magnetic flux density B and the A. So for this purpose, because of A, supposed to, you need to remember that A is always perpendicular to the surface area. So I show you a few cases. Okay, this is the first case. So to understand the AA is, as I said, A is perpendicular to the surface of the uh, area. So in this case, normally we have the angle alpha and theta. So to understand the theta, theta is the angle between the B, the uh, magnetic flux density, uh, density or magnetic field line B, the brown color, uh, arrow with the blue arrow which is the blue arrow is represent the area of the coil or perpendicular to the surface area okay and sometimes the question mentioned plane of the coil so plane of the coil is referred to the coil position okay uh, uh, coil uh, location or also sometimes said surface area so you need to identify for the magnetic flux the theta it is very important and the, another two cases in this case for example if the area of the coil parallel to the magnetic flux density area magnetic field strength area this is parallel to each other okay so oh sorry uh, okay you can see my slide right so theta is equal to zero because of A and B is parallel. So cos zero lah. And for the third uh, situation, if you have the plane of the coil parallel to the B, so the area, the area of the coil is perpendicular to the B in this case. So theta is represent 90 degree. This is the area or the theta that you're supposed to identify from the question. Okay. And then we also can calculate the magnetic flux linkage. So what is the difference between magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage? Uh, in terms of symbol, we use the capital letters of phi. So the definition is number of magnetic field line passing through the end turns of the coil with the surface area A. Meaning that the number of magnetic field line that passing through the area. So it is represent the magnetic flux linkage. Is magnetic flux, it is general, which is the scalar product between the magnetic flux density and the cross-section area of the surface. Okay. And for the magnetic flux linkage, the equation given is same with the magnetic flux only because of it is uh, involved n turns of coil, few numbers of turns of the coil, so we just times with the n, okay? So that's the how to calculate the magnetic flux linkage. So this is the first part of the electromagnetic induction, the intro, uh, the, the basic you know, for the, um, uh, the in, induced, okay, or uh, electromagnetic induction. Okay, now we go to the induced EMF itself. So the symbol for the induced EMF is uh, epsilon. So we call it induced EMF. And uh, from Faraday's law, okay, Faraday's law state that to explain about the induced EMF and the magnitude of the induced EMF, we use the Faraday, we refer to the Faraday's law. So Faraday's law state that the magnitude of the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. 
Okay, directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Okay, and uh, for the equation, because of it is directly proportional, the magnitude of induced MF, directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux, so rate of change of magnetic flux is dV per dt. And there is a negative sign here. What does it mean by negative sign? So this negative sign uh, explained by the Lenz law. So the magnitude of the Faraday's uh, magnitude of the induced MF explained by the Faraday's law, and the negative sign is explained or the direction of the induced MF explained by the Lenz law. So Lenz law state that the negative sign indicate that the direction of the induced MF is always opposed the change of magnetic flux producing it. So the clue is opposed. The the key point is the opposite, opposite, opposite the change of the magnetic flux for that producing it. So because of that, referring to the Faraday's law and Lenz law, we will apply this equation uh, for, we, we will see few conductor. Okay, few conductor where we can, the electromagnetic uh, EMF can induce inside the conductor or the induced current can flow in that conductor. So first we look at the straight conductor. So for the case of the straight conductor, if this straight conductor PQ moving to the right, okay, uh, for the, at the displacement X, okay, and the length of the conductor is L, let's say. So, referring to the Faraday's law, the induced MF is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux and change of magnetic flux, we know is BA cos theta, right? BA cos theta or BA if it is 90 degrees. So, uh, from the BA, we replace the V as a BA and then in this case, the area, the area of this uh, straight conductor when they move uh, at the distance of X, so we have the area is actually equal to XL, okay, XL. And if we rearrange the equation, we get that BL dx per dt. And we know the dx per dt, the change of area, the change of distance x over t, is referred to the, sorry, it referred to the velocity. Because of that, the induced EMF for the straight conductor is equal to BLV sine theta. So, uh, induced EMF uh, is a, a vector quantity, it has the direction, yeah. So, BLV sin theta, how we get the BLV, so it is the expedity represent the V. So, this is actually the equation is given to you during the final exam. So, you know worries only, you need to know when you want to use. And if you refer to the list of formula given to you, they only give the symbol of EMF but they not state either it is for the straight conductor or coil or rotating coil. So, make sure that you know where you're supposed to use that equation. And for the induced EMF in a coil, okay, Especially for the rotating coil with, uh, sorry, for a coil with N turns. So, the Faraday's law, the equation for the Faraday's law or the equation for the induced EMF is equal to negative N dV per dt. And if we replace uh, the V, we do the same thing when to derive. So, dB, dBA per dt. And in this case, there are two cases for the coil. So, for the case of coil, it is either the change of the area of the coil, okay, so we get the induced EMF in the coil as negative NB, the A per DT, so this is the change of area, the rate of change area of the coil, or if the coil not change the area but the change of magnetic field, okay, so if the magnetic field change, okay, the rate of uh, dB per dt, so we have the induced EMF for the coil, for the change of magnetic field which is equal to N, negative and a db per dt so in this case the area of the coil is constant okay and uh, the first case is now the magnetic field is constant so it is depends either one you can choose depends on the situation or the question given and for the we also have if what happened if the coil is rotating so we have special equation for the rotating coil the induced emf produced inside the rotating coil is given by the equation of nba omega sine theta but we have the maximum value for the induced emf which is for the rotating coil yeah which is equal to nba omega only okay for the maximum uh, induced emf induced in the rotating coil okay so th this is for the induced emf and another part the third part actually in this topic that you learn is about the self inductance and also the mutual inductance and another one is about the energy store in an inductor so i try to differentiate to just 
to not to differentiate but to see the difference between the self inductance and mutual inductance so that you will understand first uh, we look at the process what is the process of induction so for the self inductance which is represent the symbol l the process uh, the process self inductance is the process of producing and induce emf in the coil due to a change of current flowing through the same coil Okay, so the clue for self-inductance is because of the change inside the conductor. But for the mutual inductance, which is represented by the symbol of M, it is a process of producing, uh, producing and induce EMF in the coil 2 due to the change of current flow through the coil 1. So for the mutual inductance, it is involved two coil, okay, two conductor. So the producing of the induced EMF in the coil 2 because of the coil 1. So of course coil 2 there is no power supply but the still we can induce the EMF inside. So how after this we will look at the uh, problem solving, the related equation for you to understand. And the definition of inductance is or definition of the cell inductance is we refer to the equation actually which is the ratio of the self-induced or we call it uh, induced EMF or back EMF to the rate of change of current in the same coil. The ratio of the induced EMF to the rate of change of current in the same coil. And for the mutual inductance, the definition is the ratio. Also, we refer to the equation. So, it is a ratio of induced EMF in the coil to the rate of change of current in another coil. So, can you see the difference in terms of the de definition of the process, definition of the inductance itself? For the self-inductance, in the same, uh, the change uh, occur in the same coil, but for the mutual inductance, the change occur in another coil. So, because of that, the equation given by, because of it is the ratio of induced MF to the DI per DT, so you can get this equation, or we also can use N phi over I. So, we can derive from the induced EMF equation. And uh, for the mutual inductance, because of mutual inductance for both conductor, because of, let's say we have two coils or two conductors, so mutual inductance for both is equal. So we just write down either M12 or M21, it's the same. So the magnitude is the ratio of induced EMF, negative phi and negative EMF divided by the I per DT. So in this case, if you want to use the flux related to the magnetic flux, so the change in the magnetic, what is meaning uh, magnetic flux too? Meaning that the change, the rate of change of magnetic flux in the conductor two. Why the why the changing happen in the conductor two? Because of the currents that produce in the conductor one. So this is to explain uh, the mutual inductance. We refer to the subscript, uh, meaning that we refer to which conductor that change the magnetic flux, and because of which conductor that the current flow. Okay, but for the self inductance, uh, in their self, okay, in itself, okay. And another related equation, which is because of we have a few types of conductor, for example, coil. So, self inductance for the coil is equal to mu nu n square A over 2R, okay. And for the solenoid, okay, mutual uh, self inductance for the solenoid is mu nu n square A over L. So, make sure that you differentiate between the coil and the solenoid equation for the self-inductance. The difference is only 2R and L. Okay? So, R is represent the radius of the coil. And for the mutual inductance, because of both mutual inductance for both conductor, if both solenoid, so the mutual inductance is equal. So, the equation is mu naught and 1 and 2 because of we have two conductor. Number two solenoid, so the number of turns N1 and N2 represent both conductor times root A divided by L. Okay, so that's the related equation. And another thing that you're supposed to know about the self inductance and mutual inductance. So this is the dependency of the self inductance and mutual inductance. It's supposed to refer you, supposed to refer to the equation. So we can say that the mutual inductance and the self inductance is depends on the size of the conductor because of it is involved A or the radius, eh? and then the shape, of course, kalau dia rectangular, A nya different, compared to circle, okay, and then number of turn, of course, because of N is inside the equation, and permeability of the medium, so it is depends, and normally for your level, for the matriculation level, uh, it is, uh, we consider it is a uh, uh, free medium, vacuum medium, okay, and also depends on the length of the solenoid, for the solenoid, and for the R, it is depends. Actually, R is referred to the size of the coil. Lah. That's why we not mention depends on the radius. Okay, and both self-inductance and mutual inductance, actually, it is a, a quanti, uh, scalar quantity. 
So there is no direction for the self inductance and mutual inductance, and both the unit is Henry. Okay, and then uh, another important terms that involve uh, in the in this topic is energy store in the inductor, where we can calculate the energy store such as in the uh, energy store in the capacitor. So this is the energy store in the inductor. So the given equation is half L I square. So L is refer to the self inductance. Okay, and of course the unit for energy is joule. Okay, that's overall. I I just summarize. Actually, it is a, a very detailed explanation if you refer to your lecture note. But this is only the summary so that when I discuss the uh, revision, uh, the exercise question, you know which equation that involve and which part it is. So generally, I have divided this topic into uh, three parts. Okay, just now. Now we go to the, so I have uh, shared with you the link, right? The link of the uh, PDF question that you can try to do first. Okay, and then uh, when we discuss, you can, maybe you can give response in the chat box if you have any question or if you get the answer, you can mention in the chat box. Eh? Alright, okay, if you look at the first question, figure shows the plan, plan view of a circular coil placed in a magnetic field strength. Well, of 1.2 tesla if the area of the coil if the area of the circular coil is 4 cm square calculate okay at the same time yeah after this now and after this when i read the question at the same time i want you to refer to the given information so this is one of the important step please list the information given from the question so that you can identify the correct equation which equation that you want to use okay so for a for question 1a you need to calculate the magnetic flux through the coil when the position of the coil is as shown Okay, so this is the first question and question B. You need to calculate the magnetic flux linkage. Okay, remember there are two terms that I introduced you, magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage. So you need to calculate the magnetic flux linkage through the coil if the rectangular coil has 60 turns and its plane max an angle of 60 degree to the magnetic field. So plane, its plane max an angle. So the plane an angle of 60. So you need to take note when you have the question, maybe you need to highlight this important point. Okay, generally from the question, we have the information of B and also the area. So for the area, I just changed to the SI unit. So to make sure that you, you can substitute the correct value. So first, what we do is we identify the, uh, um, uh, the magnetic field, okay, and the area because we want to know the angle for the, to calculate the magnetic flux. You remember the theta, you need to identify the theta. So in this case, because of... Uh, if you refer to the magnet uh, north and south pole, so the magnetic field is uh, directed from north to south. And the area of the coil, which is the area, the per per perpendicular area of the coil is A. So you can see that the B and the A is parallel to each other. Sorry, parallel to each other. So if parallel, the theta is equal to zero. So for the first question, because you need to calculate the magnetic flux through the coil when the position of the coil is as shown. So in this case, to calculate the magnetic flux, you identify uh, initially the theta. Here, theta is equal to zero. Because of that, when you do the calculation, okay, phi, magnetic flux, which is represent phi, is equal to BA cos theta. Theta is zero. B, you, we just substitute the value here. So you will get the phi. Have you tried to answer this question? If yes, mm, please uh, write down in the chat box. Okay, we can discuss. You can write down the answer in the chat box. So, as I said, we use the magnetic flux equation. You will get the answer which is 4.8 times 10 power 94 Weber. So, do take note, the unit for magnetic flux is Weber. Okay, for question number B, you need to calculate the magnetic flux linkage through the coil. Okay, given the, num uh, the number of turns of the coil and the plane makes an angle of 60 degree. Okay, very good, Siti Aisha. Congratulations, you are right. Remember the unit, yeah? Remember the unit. Okay, thank you so much. Very good. So, for B, uh, take note that the plane makes an angle of 60 degree. So, uh, plane of the coil... Uh, here is the plane of the coil, so the perpendicular area is A. If the plane of the coil makes an angle of 60, meaning that theta is equal to, you need to identify the theta first, so theta is equal to 30. Because of the theta is 30. When you want to calculate the magnetic flux linkage, we use the equation for magnetic flux linkage, uh, which is NBA cos theta. We just times with the number of turn, and but the angle is now, 
we have calculated theta is 30, so cos 30. Or sometimes, eh, if you are quite smart, but it is not true, referring to the concept, you also can use sine. But you cannot use sine theta, but you can use sine alpha. Okay, NBA, sine alpha. Okay, sine alpha. So you can substitute sine 60 because of sine 60 and cos 30, you will get the same answer. Itu, uh, secara matematiknya, yes, you can. But secara fiziknya, the concept because of magnetic flux and magnetic flux linkage is a scalar quantity. So the, the magnitude is supposed to be cos theta. Okay, but the, you still can get the correct answer. Now we go to the question number uh, two. So for question number two, this is quite conceptual question, but you suppose you need to understand because even if it is a calculation, sometimes the, the question want you to identify the direction of the current. So I just uh, use this equation to, so that you can apply when you want to identify the direction of the induced current. Okay, take a look at question number two. Two coil are placed in the arrangement as shown. So coil X and coil Y is side by side. So it is connected. If you look at the coil X is connected to the battery and a switch. Coil Y, uh, Y is connected to a millivoltmeter. So there's no uh, battery or no power from coil Y, coil Y, okay? So uh, first uh, question A, you need to draw an arrow inside coil X to show arrow, an arrow, yeah? okay, inside coil X to show the direction of the magnetic field in coil X when the switch S is closed. Okay, so that's the first question. And question two, you need to calculate, you need to identify the direction of magnetic field inside coil Y. The same thing, you need to sketch, draw an arrow and also identify the induced current, the direction of the induced current in the coil Y. Okay, so take a look at the first part, first question A. So when what happens when the switch S is closed in the coil X? The current will flow in the coil X, right? And how you want to identify the currents that flow through the coil X? We refer to the battery, the positive terminal. So current is supposed to flow from the positive terminal. So this is the direction of current. And then how you want to identify the direction of magnetic field? Because you need to draw an arrow to show the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, if we have the direction of the current in the coil, we can use the right hand grip rule. So actually, this is only the illustration, the figure only. I just want to show you. It is not related to the question. Eh? I just want to show you the for the right-hand grip rule, your thumb is represent the direction of the magnetic field. Because of if you want to sketch the arrow for the magnetic field, uh, your thumb will represent the uh, magnetic field direction. And your forefinger, so your forefinger is represent the direction of the induced, uh, the direction of the current, that flow in the coil. So there are number of turns. So it represents our four finger. So for this question for coil X, you can uh, grip, you can use your right hand grip rule to grip the coil X following the direction of the current. Meaning that your four finger follow the direction of current. In that case, when we grip, if you grip, it shows that the current is uh, uh, upward, nah, uh, the in front of the coil. Uh, the current is upward, so when you grip, your thumb show the direction of the magnetic field, right? So that that arrow is uh, the, the thumb show the north pole. Sorry, eh? the thumb show the magnetic field direction or the north pole. Of course, at the end of your our thumb is show the south pole. So because of that, from the right hand grip rule, we can identify the north pole, and we know that for the north pole, uh, if the conductor at the north pole. The magnetic field is, uh, sorry, eh? can you see my slide? Okay, so the magnetic field will be uh, directed uh, out, out of the North Pole. But remember, uh, from the chapter magnetic field, so magnetic field is out of uh, from the North Pole. So the direction of magnetic field is as shown, the green line, okay? So that's the direction of magnetic field, where the arrow North Pole is shown the outward of the magnetic field. Okay, so settle question number A. For question number B, if you refer question number B, you, you need to draw the same thing. You need to draw the direction of the magnetic field in the coil Y. But if you look at the coil Y, there is no uh, battery. So how you want to identify the direction of the current? Ah, This is what we call induction. Electromagnetic induction where initially in the coil wall there is no current. But when the current flow in the coil X, because of it is located side by side, 
the change of magnetic flux that produced in the coil X will be cut by the coil Y because of the increasing of the magnetic flux uh, at the coil X. So the cutting of the uh, the cutting of the magnetic flux, okay, from coil X by coil Y will cause the induced current induced in the coil Y. But how to identify the direction? So it is like this. Uh, we uh, reverse process where we know that when the uh, coil Y is located uh, beside the coil X, so uh, if the uh, at the end of this coil X is sound, sound, so it's supposed to at the coil Y, sound is only can uh, located near to the north. Am I right? Because sound uh, like the north pole, but from the lens law, lens law said that. If uh, uh, to 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 identify the induced current or induced EMF in another coil, it's supposed to oppose the magnetic flux that change that producing it. Because of that, at the end of this coil wall, it's supposed to be north, but from the lens law, it's supposed to be opposed. If opposed, meaning that at the end of this coil wall, it is south. From the lens law, okay, we apply the lens law. Explain about the uh, production of the induced, induced EMF or induced current. Okay, after we identify this side is south and this is north, now you can identify the direction of magnetic field, right? Because I'm referring to the right hand grip rule, your thumb is representing the north pole and uh, and north, meaning that the magnetic field is, if you look at here, for the north pole, magnetic field is outward. So the direction of the magnetic field in this case is to the right. That's the way how we identify the direction of magnetic field. And at the same time, you need to identify the direction of the induced current. So how? Because of we know the direction of north and also the direction of V. So you can use back the right hand grip rule just now. Now, as I said, it is a reverse process. We use the right hand grip rule to identify the because of the north is the the north is our thumb, and the forefinger is showing the direction of current. So for the coil while, for our forefinger will show the direction of the induced current. And if you grip the coil while, okay, you show the north pole is to the right. So you will get that the direction of the uh, current in the coil while is in front the in front side is downward. So like this, okay. So because of you refer to the 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 forefinger, yeah, your forefinger when you grip the coil wire with the north pole uh, directed to the right, so you will get the induced current is in that direction. Okay, so that's the way how we identify the induced current. Even in the coil wire, there is no power supply, there is no battery, but the current still induced. How you know we can detect the uh, uh, the deflection of the uh, uh, milli voltmeter or sometimes we can put the galvanometer so when the, the galvanometer deflect we understood that there is a induced current and we also can identify the ratio of induced current if we use the galvanometer okay is it clear class is it clear everyone so i hope that uh, you can understand how to this is quite conceptual because of we apply two things first the lens law and also the right hand grip rule so right hand grip rule just to identify the direction of induced current or to that the, to identify the direction of the magnetic field okay now we go to the question number three so for question number three the figure okay, shows on. Uh, uh, yes. we, are, uh, we have already la go live for 30 minutes so okay. would you like to take a break now okay okay, okay. Okay, so right. before we take a break, uh, I will announce the third digit code for credit claim. And listen carefully, everyone. So the digit is number one. Okay, the digit is number one. So stay tuned, everyone, and let's watch the advertisement for the break. Berita baik untuk semua. Kini, Akademi YouTuber memperkenalkan sistem mata gancaran kredit Ayu untuk dikumpul. Jom ikuti kelas tuition live Ayu untuk mengumpul kredit Ayu dan berpeluang menebus hadiah-hadiah yang menarik. Hadiah bernilai lebih sepuluh ribu ringgit disediakan secara percuma untuk pelajar seluruh Malaysia. Apa tunggu lagi? Tebus ganjaran hebat ini sekarang. Layari www.academyyoutuber.com 
untuk maklumat lanjut. Okay, welcome back students. Teacher Non, you may proceed with your presentation. Okay, thank you Madam Rosmaya. So, hi everyone. Okay, thank you so much Shuhada, Aisha, Awais and Chia Ying. Okay, very good. I hope that you clear. You understand. Okay, that's the most important. Okay, now we go to the question number three. So, the figure shows a loop of copper wire of radius 5 cm located in the uniform magnetic field. 0.2 Tesla. So as, as usual, as, at the same time, I want you to refer to the list of uh, information given. Um, the plane of the loop perpendicular to the magnetic field. The total resistance of the loop is 2.5 ohm and the loop has 50 turns. If the loop is removed completely to the right from the magnetic field in 200 milliseconds, calculate the, you need to calculate the induced EMF and also the induced current and uh, show the direction of the induced current. Okay, referring to the given information, normally because of here, uh, given the radius of the loop or radius of the copper wire, so the hidden information that you can get is the area. Normally, I will ask you to calculate, uh, calculate first and then later on, you can substitute in the equation. Okay, so this is the area of the uh, loop, loop or the copper wire and to, to identify or to calculate the induced EMF. So in this case, we use the uh, induced EMF, the magnitude of the induced EMF equation state by the Faraday's law, which is negative d phi per dt. And, okay, also referring to the all this information, we can replace the magnetic flux as BA cos phi. Okay, sorry, BA cos theta. And then NBA cos theta divided by T, you can substitute the value directly. So, all information is, is given right and because of here, you have calculate A first. We have calculate the A. So, you just need to substitute the A. Uh, less mistake. Okay, sometimes less mistake when you do the calculation. And to take note that the T, which is uh, 200 millisecond. So, this is the prefix, milli, 10 power negative 3. Please, eh, you, if, you, if your calculator uh, have no prefix, so you need to uh, substitute the value. And if you calculate, you will get the answer for the induced EMF which is equal to 0 0.393 volt, okay, from the calculation. So, in this case, there is uh, the hidden information is only the A that you're supposed to calculate earlier. The rest is given to you. And uh, because of the, okay, how we identify the theta is 0. This is also the very important hidden, hidden information. Because of B and A, B and A, uh, uh, even the copper wire, this loop is perpendicular to the B, but the area, remember the, the, the area of the loops is parallel to the B. Am I right? Parallel to the B. Because of B, the direction of B cross meaning that the B is into the page. So, the area is either into the page, page 2 or uh, upward. Uh, or out of page, so it is still parallel to each other, so theta is equal to zero. Okay, uh, so this is we apply the magnetic field, uh, magnetic flux equation. And then B, we need to, you need to calculate the induced current. So this is, you are referring, there is no equation from this topic, but it is referred to the previous topic. To calculate the induced current, you need to apply the Ohm's law. Okay, previous topic, which is topic three, right? You learn about the Ohm's law. But in this case, because of that, we calculate from the Faraday's law, we calculate the induced EMF. So, the current that produced is induced current. And R is given, the R of the loop or copper wire is 2.5 ohm. So, when you substitute the induced EMF that you have calculated and also the R, you will get the induced current. The magnitude of induced current is 0 0.157 ampere. Okay, very good, Siti Aisha. Your answer is correct, 0 0.39. Congratulations. And for the, okay, this is the induced, induced current. Uh, you, we also need to, uh, you also need to identify the direction, right? So, how you identify the direction of the induced current? Okay, listen carefully, yeah. There are a few steps that you're supposed to follow. Okay, the first step is to identify the direction of the induced current. We refer to the Lenz law. Remember what Lenz law said? Lenz law said that the production of the induced EMF or induced current in the conductor is opposed to the change that producing it. So in this case, the change that produce the change that produce the induced current is the, the 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 magnetic flux, the cutting of magnetic flux by the loop where the loop is moving to the right. Okay, moving to the right. So if the loop moving to the right, meaning that the 
the from the lens law the force the magnetic force exerted on the coil is oppose the motion that producing it so can you guess where is the direction of f supposed to do, supposed to be in the opposite direction of the motion of the loops okay that's from the lens law and we just identified the f now we want to identify the direction of the induced current so for the induced current we use the fleming left hand rule so still remember the Fleming left hand rule? Okay, if I'm not mistaken, after this question, I will explain to you about the Fleming left hand rule. So in this case, we just use where your thumb is represent the uh, uh, force, the force exerted on the coil, on the conductor. And the second finger is your B, magnetic field direction. And the, your third or middle finger is represent the uh, current, the direction of the induced current that we want to identify. So because of that, if you apply your Fleming left hand rule, okay. So I hope that you familiar with the Fleming because of this is revision, right? You have learned this topic few few weeks ago, okay. So we get that the direction of the induced current in the coil or in the loop is counterclockwise, okay. Referring to the Fleming left hand rule, meaning that there are two steps to identify the direction of the induced uh, current. Use the lens law and also the Fleming right hand rule. Actually, another there, there are a few ways to identify, but this is the easiest way for me and for for me to explain to you. Okay, so uh, this is uh, okay. Take a look at the next question so that you will understand. Ah, this is also same. And uh, to identify the induced current, the direction of the induced current. So if you look at the question number four. Uh, this figure shows a 0 0.3 meter metal bar PQ moving on the rail with a velocity of 4.2 meter per second in the uniform magnetic field of 1.57 Tesla. Okay, directed uh, out of page. So, out of page is because of the dot. The dot symbol symbol for the magnetic field. Okay, B, eh? the dot symbol for B. So, meaning that it is outward. If cross just now, it is into the page. So, uh, a resistor R connect the rails. Okay, so showing here. There is a resistor here. So, first, what is the direction of the induced current in the resistor R? You need to explain your answer. So, how you want to answer this question? And then, the B, you need to uh, calculate the resistors R, the magnitude of the resistors R. And you need to state two way to increase the induced current with the R fixed. Okay, later on, we will see. So, first, take a look at the question A. So, for question A, to identify the direction of the induced current in the resistor R, first, see, we use the lens law. Because of this is the induced current, yeah? induced current, no power supply, no battery. So we refer to the lens law, lens law, lens law. From the lens law, we can identify the direction of FB first, the magnetic force exerted on the conductor PQ. Because of conductor PQ are moving and cutting the magnetic flux, the conductor PQ will cause the current flow in it because of the cutting of the magnetic flux of B. Okay, because of that, referring to the uh, uh, lens law, we can identify the FB. So, because of you, we need to explain the ans your answer, right? So, I just write down here, the magnetic force exerted is opposed the motion of the uh, conductor, which is the produ that produce the induced current. So, opposed the V, so our F is actually to the left. Okay, this is FB. And, okay, next step, when you have the FB, you also have the magnetic field direction B, which is uh, out of page. You can identify the direction of current. So, to identify the direction of current, we use the Fleming left hand rule. Okay, this is our Fleming left hand rule. So, as I said, it is it is a lot of way. Ada cara panjang, ada cara pendek, ada cara muda. So, I just use this way, the Fleming left hand to, to show the direction of the induced current. You also can use the thumb. Uh, that It is a lot of research. Uh, research, uh, action, uh, action research about this topic. It is a lot of way to identify. So, this is the one that I, uh, for me, very easy to explain and understand. Okay. So, uh, referring to the Fleming left hand rule, you can identify because of the direction of the uh, force is to the left. And then the B is in, uh, out of page. So, if you apply your Fleming left hand rule, you will get the direction of induced current in the bar because of PQ is cutting the magnetic flux. So the induced current produced in the PQ is from P to Q. Can you get that? Can you use your Fleming left right hand rule? Okay, I hope that you try. Eh? So you will get that the direction of the induced current is from P to Q. But 
the question said that you need to mention the direction or you need to state the direction of the index current in register R. So how's your answer? You need to declare your answer. You just not say that the current induced in uh, from P to Q only. That's you not answer the question yet. So you need to mention that uh, you uh, the, because of the current flow. So also the current will flow through the metal bar and also through the resistor. And you can say that you can declare the direction of the induced current in the resistor, which is uh, either upward or you also can mention it is clockwise direction or as shown in the figure. So in this case, if you sketch the your if you sketch the figure in your solution paper, you can say that as shown in the figure also accepted. As long as you show the direction of the induced current, you still can get marks. Okay. Alright, so this is to identify the direction of the induced current in the resistor R. But we don't know the, the magnitude of the resistance R. So now B, we want to calculate uh, the R if the current 0 0.8, uh, the induced current just now is 0 0.8, a uh, 68 ampere uh, flow produced, okay, induced in the coil, in the, in the coil or in the bar, okay. So how to calculate the how to calculate the resistance R. So for that case, uh, referring to the metal bar because of the current also flow in the metal bar and also from the Ohm's law. So first, we know that both is induced EMF, right? So we can write down that BLV for the bar, for the conductor PQ and the induced current in the resistor R. So the EMF, the Ohm's law, right? So, we can say that BLV is equal to I induced R. So, this is for the conductor. Uh, sorry, for the resistor and BLV for the uh, conductor PQ. Metal bar PQ. So, referring to the information given from the question, uh, you just substitute uh, correctly. Supposed to call, substitute correctly. And the current is given to us which is 0 0.68. You, if you calculate, you will get the R which is equal to, have you tried? The R is 2.9 ohms. So, if you get the correct answer, congratulations. Meaning that you understand this is very high level concept where you're supposed to combine the concept of the induced, EM, uh, induced EMF in the conductor with the uh, induced EMF for the resistor, in, inside the resistor. Okay? So, it is B. Now, you need to state uh, two ways to increase the induced current without changing the R. How? Normally, we know when we change the R, of course, the current will increase, will change, right? So, let's say if you want to increase the induced current, maybe we can decrease the resistance. But in this question, we cannot change the R. So, what we so where we're supposed to refer? So, we refer to the equation of uh, that we used earlier, the relationship between them. So, referring to this question, the induced current is directly proportional to the B, L and V. Because of that, to increase the induced current inside the that flow through in the uh, in the conductor, so we can increase the magnetic field, or we can increase the length of the conductor, or we can move the conductor faster. Okay, V move the conductor faster, so the induced current also will increase. Okay, that's the way how to increase. I just give you three. Even you're supposed to state two. Just for you to get the idea, if you want to answer, it is a lot of choice, okay? Now we go to the question number six. So for question number six, a coil of uh, 80 turns is placed in, in a changing magnetic field. The changing magnetic field, uh, I wanted to highlight these turns. So take note now because I remember when I explained the concept just now, uh, it is something that you can you need to do with the changing magnetic field. So the area of the coil is 0 0.3 centimeter square and the induced EMF in the coil is 2.69 millivolt. Find the rate of change of the magnetic field. Rate of change of magnetic field. So rate of change of magnetic field is dB per dt. So this is all the information given. Change the A to the SI unit. And which equation that you want to use? Because of this is, you want to calculate the rate of change of magnetic field, but you have the induced EMF. Okay? So you can use the equation for the induced EMF. But for the changing magnetic field equation, there are two equations, right? The first one is changing area of the coil. The second one is changing magnetic field. So we use the second equation, which is the induced current, the induced EMF for the change of magnetic, the rate of change of magnetic field. So referring to that, this equation, very easy right now. 
You just need to substitute the value for the induced EMF, the number of turns, and also the area. Then you can calculate the change of magnetic, uh, the rate of change of magnetic field, which is equal to 1.12 Tesla per second. I just want to remind you uh, for this topic. Uh, actually, this topic is uh, quite quite important and also quite difficult compared to the magnetic field chapter. The magnetic field topic, but the question is supposed to be direct. The hidden is only you need to understand the basic thing about the magnetic flux and the magnetic flux linkage. Okay, the rest is direct uh, using the equation. So you need to read the question carefully. Okay, now we look at the question number seven. A coil of n turns with an area of 6 times 10 power negative 2 meters square is rotating at the frequency of 80 hertz in the uniform magnetic field of 0 0.25 tesla. It is a lot of information given, right? So make sure that you list it, list it carefully, list it one by one. So the maximum induced EMF in the coil is 120.6 volt. So this is maximum induced EMF and you need to calculate the number of turns of the coil. So our focus is a coil rotating coil okay it is not a coil it is a rotating coil so for the rotating coil we use the equation for the rotating coil but for the because i've given the maximum induced emf so for the rotating coil equation and also the induced emf is maximum the equation is equal to n b a omega okay and if you look at here we have the frequency right so we just replace the omega as 2 pi f and you just need to substitute all the value given here and you can calculate the n as the number of turn which is equal to 16 turns. So you get that answer, class? I hope that you can get the correct answer because of this is uh, the, the, the concept part or the, the difficult part is only to identify it is a rotating coil and also it is the maximum induced EMF. So it has special equation for the maximum induced EMF. Okay. And now we go to the question number uh, nine and sorry, number eight. So class yeah, for the matriculation student, actually 70% uh, of my question, our revision today is I'm referring to the uh, past question. So if you try to answer the past question, maybe you will feel that you have answered that question. So we have we discuss here. So shorten your time to do the revision. Okay. So for question number eight, and uh, alternating current generator. So this is uh, about the uh, uh, coil. Yeah? Okay, generator consists a coil of thirty tons with cross section area of zero point zero five uh, meter square and resistance. Uh, sorry, and resistance of hundred ohm. The coil rotate in a magnetic field 0 0.5 Tesla at a frequency of 20 Hz. Okay. You get the idea, right? There's a frequency. Of course, it is related with the angular frequency. Uh, angular frequency or angular velocity. Okay. And, okay. Take a look at the information given. Okay. I have list there. And the A, we want to calculate the maximum induced EMF. And B, we want to calculate the... Uh, uh, maximum induced current okay so it is quite repeating uh, using the same equation but different situation okay so in this case because of the co uh, the coil with the 30 tons because of the maximum induced emf we want to calculate the maximum induced emf you refer to the equation for the maximum induced emf and the same thing because of we given the frequency we replace with the omega and then you substitute the information given when you if you do the calculation you will get the answer which is 94.2 volt okay so actually the same thing but in this case the, uh, it mentioned that you need to calculate the maximum induced emf and for me the most important is for you to feel very comfortable to answer if you're supposed to list the information correctly uh, uh, list all the information given in the question correctly so that you can see what you're supposed to substitute and you get the idea what you're supposed to calculate first for because of sometimes uh, I advise you to calculate first the omega, but because of this is the direct use of equation. Maksud saya kita just darab just semua so you can uh, apply like this. Okay. Now we go to the question number uh, B uh, to calculate the induced current. So there is no shortcut. We refer to the Ohm's law for the induced EMF. So the I is supposed to be induced current. And referring to the induced MF that we have calculated, you can calculate the maximum induced current produced, which is equal to 94.2 divided by 100 ohms of resistor. So you will get 0 0.942 ampere. Okay. 
Is it clear, right? If you have any question, you can uh, write down on, uh, in the chat box. Or if you think that I explained too fast, so because of we want, I want to cook after this. Uh, okay, to open the fasting. So just tell me, I can slow down my uh, explanation. Okay. So for question number nine, an inductor, an inductor coil having. Uh, thank you, Aisha. Thank you very much. So an inductor coil having four turns and five millimeter in diameter carry six ampere current. Okay. So we need to calculate the inductance of the coil. And then you need to calculate the energy store in the inductor and also the induced EMF across the inductor. So if you look at the question, it is, it is a, a direct question where if you list the information given and you can identify the hidden information, which is this is a coil, so you can calculate the area of the coil. And for A, to calculate the inductance of the coil. Inductance, the symbol for inductance is L. So L is equal to mu naught n square A over 2R. Okay, in this case, when you, because we have calculated the A, so A is equal to 1.96 center power 95 meter square. So just a sub, sub, substitute mu naught permittivity of the uh, coil, 4 pi times 10 power 97, and the number of turns is 4, so 4 square divided by 2R. Okay, and then you will get the answer which is, uh, the, self, uh, the inductance is 7.88 times 10 power of negative 8. Uh, Henry, okay, and then to calculate the energy store in the inductor. So actually, the only one equation for the energy store in the inductor is half L I square. So uh, for the part A, you have calculate the inductance L. So in the B for to calculate the energy store, you just need to use the substitute the equation for the inductance in the equation, and also the current that flow, okay, which is six ampere you will get the energy store in the coil which is equal to 1.42 times 10 power of negative 6 joule. Okay? Right. It is direct, right? As I said, it is direct. And uh, what is the induced EMF across the inductor if the current drops to 3 ampere in 7 microseconds? So this is a few additional information where the current drop to, to 3 ampere in 7 microseconds. Yeah? So for C, uh, referring to the information given, we have the DT, uh, the current drop 7 microsecond, and also the final current. So our initial current is 6. Because of that, you can use the equation. Actually, this is the equation for the self-inductance, uh, right? The definition of the self-inductance. Remember, L is equal to negative, uh, L is equal to negative, uh, uh, EMF, in this EMF divided by DI over DT, right? And then we rearrange because we want to calculate the induced EMF. So referring to the equation negative L, DI per DT. So the L, the inductor, the, the inductance that we have calculated, just substitute for the change of current from three, from 6 to 3, meaning that initial is 6, final is 3. So final minus initial, 3 minus 6, uh, in between uh, 7 microseconds. So, if you, when you substitute and you calculate, you will get the answer which is for the induced EMF across the inductor, it is equal to 0 0.034 volt. Okay. Also direct. Cuma the equation given, as I said, uh, is the self-inductance equation. Definition of self-inductance, you just need to rearrange the equation. So, the list of information is very, very important to help you to identify the equation that you supposed to use. Okay. Now we go to the question number 10. A 40 turn solenoid has a cross section area of 181 times 10 power of negative 3 meter square and a length of 20 centimeter carrying a current of 3.4 ampere. So you need to calculate the inductance. Okay, take a look at the list of information given from the question. Yeah? And then you need to calculate the inductance of the solenoid. Energy stored in the solenoid and also the induced EMF in the solenoid if the current drops. So if you look at the question, uh, but in this case, the current dropped to zero in 55 millisecond. Only the numbers is different. Okay. So, to calculate the inductance of the solenoid, just now it's a coil. Now, it, this is the solenoid. So, if solenoid, we use the equation for the inductance of the solenoid. And as I said, you are quite lucky because of the list of selected formula given to you. Specific, specific the L for the coil and also L for the solenoid. 
and in this case we just need to substitute all the information given correctly and if you calculate you will get the answer which is 1.82 times 10 power of neg negative 3 henry for the inductance of the selenite and then how about energy stored in the selenite so we use the only the, the only one equation of the energy store right half li square so our l L is 1.82 that we have calculated in A. Just substitute and our uh, current is 3.4 ampere. So you get the energy store in the selenite which is equal to 1.05 times 7 negative 2 joule. Okay. And for the third one, the same thing. The current is dropped to 0 in 55 second, millisecond. So uh, we use the same equation and then uh, you substitute the value for the uh, inductance that you have calculated for the selenoid and also the change of the current, the rate of change of the current and you will get the induced EMF in the selenoid is equal to 0 0.113 volt. Okay? So, uh, the difference is only the coil, the conductor. The first one, question number 9 is the coil, question number 10 is the conductor uh, selenoid. Okay? Uh, I have a uh, 12 question actually so can, can we finish it? I think that it is enough time, right? Mia de Rosmaya? Can ya? Okay. So for question number 11, two coaxial selenoid P and Q have 600 and 300 turns respectively. A current of 2.5 ampere in coil P produce an average flux of 180 microweber through each turn of P and average flux of 104 microweber through each turn of Q. So, you need to calculate the self-inductance of the selenoid P and also the mutual inductance. Okay, my advice is, it is a lot of information and the, the, the statement is quite long. So, my advice is truly you're supposed to list the information using the correct subscri subscript PQ to represent each value. Don't only write down N, 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 N1. For example, you re represent N1, 600, N2, 300. You will confuse later on which one is P and which one is Q. Okay? So, oh, congrats, Chia Yao. You also get the correct answer. Huh? Very good. Okay, just now. All right, now we want to calculate the self-inductance uh, of selenoid P. So, for the self-inductance of the selenoid P, okay, take a look at the equation. Even this, we know this is selenoid. Selenoid. But we use the equation for the self-inductance of the selenoid. Because of it is involved another coil. But in this case, yeah, in its own, in their own selenoid. So I just represent, I just write down the subscript, which is P. So in this case, self inductance of the selenoid P, LP is equal to MP, VP divided by IP. Okay, there is a purpose. Because of when I list the information, I use the subscribe, subscript. So uh, for me to substitute correctly, I can refer to the correct subscript here. Okay. So, uh, if you calculate, you will get the answer for the self-inductance uh, for the selenoid P. It is equal to 43.2 milli Henry. Okay. So, this is the first part. The second part is the mutual inductance, which is our last subtopic actually in this topic. So, to calculate the mutual inductance, we not use the general equation for the mutual inductance, but we use the relationship between the, uh, uh, the magnetic flux. Okay. Uh, or magnetic flux linkage. And phi is magnetic flux linkage. Magnetic flux linkage divided by I. Okay? So, in this case, for the mutual inductance, of course, the change what happened inside the conductor Q, Q is because of the current that flow in the in the conductor P. Okay, that's why lah, no, no confuse. No need to confuse. There is no current flow in the Q, uh, Q because we refer to the current in the conductor P because of this is mutual inductance. The production, the producing of the induced uh, EMF because of the change in the sec first conductor. Okay, in this case, the, the rest is you just need to substitute the correct value. Okay, and then you will get the answer for the mutual inductance which is 12.48 milli Henry. Okay, class? This is one way uh, about the uh, mutual inductance. Okay, which is we use the relationship between the self-inductance or uh, uh, magnetic flux linkage, okay? And phi, take note that and phi is referred to the magnetic flux linkage. Sometimes too, uh, the equation is given to you but you don't know because of not no further explanation in your lecture notes. So and phi, uh, they have explained earlier which is represent the uh, magnetic flux linkage, okay? 
And for question number 12 is quite direct. Okay, if you look at the question, uh, a solenoid, solenoid of radius R and length 15 centimeter has 102,000 turns. A second coil with 100 turns is worn around coisally with the solenoid. So you need to calculate the mutual inductance. So in this case, uh, same thing, but both is the uh, solenoid. Okay, second coil and the solenoid. So in this case, uh, only the call information is NC, which is 100 turns. The rest is information of the solenoid. But we want to calculate the mutual inductance because of I said mutual inductance is because of both. Eh? Involve both coil and solenoid. So in this case, you can use the equation for the mutual inductance, which is mu naught and solenoid times with number of turn of call times with A divided by the length of the solenoid. So what's our call is the solenoid. Okay, and then you just need to substitute to calculate the mutual inductance. And if you calculate correctly, you press your calculator correctly, you will get the answer which is equal to 7.89 times 10 power negative 3 Henry. Okay, so this is showing the direct application of the mutual inductance. Okay, compared to the question number 11 just now, it is related to the uh, uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic flux linkage. Okay, so... A very good try, Chia Yo. You are very, very hardworking student. I'm sure that you are very, you will success in your life. Okay, you are very good student. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Kismina. All right, so I think that's it for the discuss for today's discussion. Thank you so much to all of you for joining the class, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please give a comment so that I can improve my next presentation. So because of that, I give back to Madam Rosmaya, and thank you so much, everyone. Okay, Madam Rosmaya. So with God's grace, uh, we have reached the end of today's session. Congratulations to those who are able to follow our session from the beginning till the end. So before uh, we end our session for today, I will announce the fourth and the fifth last two digit codes eh, for the credit claim. So the digits are number two okay, and number six. Okay, I repeat, okay, the digits are number two and number six. Okay, so all of you, please stop posting your comments for a while. And if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please do so. So make sure it turns to grey color, okay, not the red color. And activate the icon bell so that you will not miss the next class session. So then you, if you find that the lesson was beneficial, click like and share to your friends on your social media and spread, share the goodness. So once completed, type done on the chat box uh, before the certificate link and credit claim link are given as a token of thank you for your dedication in joining the free online class today. So I will paste the link now. Okay, link credit and also link for the sigil. Okay, done. So the certificate link and the credit claim link are already given in the chat box. So please take note, uh, the link will end half an hour after this live. Make sure to use the EDD email or MOE email only to log in. Incorrect email used will not be entertained. If you haven't got one, please apply. The link to the apply, uh, the EDD email is also given in the chat box eh, uh, at the top um, uh, chatting. Eh? Okay, so if you wish to get more information on the online classes, go to www.academyyoutuber.com and to those who haven't joined ED Junior Telegram, please do so. So once again, uh, I would like uh, to thank all of the students for joining today. So remember that the more classes you join, the more credit you can claim. So feel free to share this free tuition class to your friends and teachers all over Malaysia. So this is a collective effort from all the teachers throughout Malaysia for all the students throughout the country. So thank you too for being a YouTuber Academy supporter too. So I think that's all for now. Uh, see you in another session. Uh, ingat uh, hashtag bermula percuma, uh, selamanya percuma. So Assalamualaikum, stay safe uh, till we meet again next week uh, on the same day, uh, same day, same time, okay, on fasting month. So we will uh, start uh, earlier at 3.30 p.m. and not at the usual time, 5 p.m. Eh? We will start earlier, 3.30 p.m. Okay, bye-bye. Wow, banyaknya hadiah menarik menanti anda.
Wah, kini Akademi Youtuber mengambil inisiatif baru di mana memberikan hadiah-hadiah ini secara percuma. Ya, percuma kepada anda semua. Hmm, bagaimana caranya dengan mengikuti kelas tuition online percuma Akademi Youtuber sambil mengutip mata kredit? Anda dapat menukarkannya dengan hadiah-hadiah yang menarik ini. Tunggu apa lagi? Segalanya percuma. Dan lepaskan peluang tau Dah dapat banyak hadiah menarik Takkan nak lepaskan peluang Layari www.academyyoutuber.com sekarang untuk maklumat lanjut Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber